Okay, Apple intelligence was meant to be the next big thing from Apple. I've been trying to live in the future that Apple promised with their personalized intelligence system. After hours of testing, you realize that really, Apple intelligence isn't as intelligent as it thinks it is. And today, we're not gonna write Apple off, but instead, we're gonna explore the good, the bad, and the promising. So team, let's get into it. So before we get into the structure of this video, where we're gonna break down the good, the bad, and the promising, let's just do a couple of quick hot takes, because there's things that you already know here that you don't need me to cover again. Image editing, Google and Samsung have been doing it for years. It's about time Apple had something. It works really well. AI summary is great in theory, but I think you need a PhD to decipher what is actually being said. Writing tools, pretty standard by now. They're really well integrated into the ecosystem already. Anything with a keyboard can access writing tools. All right, so that's the obvious stuff out of the way. Let's get into the real story. Here's the bad stuff. This year, Apple Intelligence promised a groundbreaking update to Siri. They called it personal intelligence. And the idea of personal intelligence is that Siri can learn from a deep connection into every app on your phone. An example of that should be, theoretically, if I have a flight that is coming up that Apple can read, I should be able to ask it where my next flight is. But when I do that, I get the exact same answer I've always had with Siri, which is sending me straight to the internet. And then, even more embarrassing, is that it asks ChatGPT, oh, do you want ChatGPT to help you out? And then it asks ChatGPT and ChatGPT is like, hey, could you tell me when your flight is and what your name is? And I'm like, what the? okay, I could have just opened my app. So I'm trying to live in this world of personalized intelligence. It's just not, it's just not here. Which leads me on to the thing that I think is the most bizarre selling point, visual intelligence. Let's start with something that it's good at. It is integrated with ChatGPT and Google search. That's very smart, really well thought out. Take a picture of something and you can then search for that. What I feel is the huge miss here though, is, and unlike Apple, they fail to understand how people work. So the example given in the video is that somebody walks up and takes a picture of a restaurant to have a look at its opening times and what its review is. Do you need to do this? When was the last time that you stood in front of a restaurant that didn't have its opening hours on the front or the menu? I feel like going up and taking pictures of all of them is a bit weird. Just a quick Google is so much easier. Any sane person does their research before they leave the house. Here's a great example. I've just downloaded iOS 18 update. I go into my in-laws house and I go, guys, I've got the brand new Apple intelligence on my phone right now. I can use this to tell me anything about something I take a picture of. And my, my mother-in-law goes, well, Hey, here's an Australian artist. I take a picture, it returns nothing. It returns just some generic pictures of very similar art, but nothing about the eyes. And my mother-in-law looks, looks at me and just goes, well, that wasn't very good, is it? In fact, this whole thing feels very un Apple. It feels like a collection of things that seem like a good idea, but in reality don't reflect how we actually behave. And the next one is a perfect example of that. Genmoji and Image Playground. I have never wanted to do this. And yeah, you know, I've played around with a couple of Gemmojis and the moment I did it, I thought, oh, that's really cool. Look, it's me shrugging. But after the novelty wears off, it's, it isn't a groundbreaking feature. And I, I don't think anyone's gonna really use this forever. And I'm happy to be proved wrong here, but again, it just feels like a gimmick and Apple products shouldn't feel like gimmicks. If any of this is resonating with you so far, please consider hitting the like button or even better, the subscribe button because we're here a couple of times a month doing reviews, comments on this type of stuff. And if you're interested in it and you like what you see, we'd love to see you next time. But without further ado, that's enough of the bashing. Let's move on to some promising things. Okay, so this is classic Apple. It's intuitive, sleek, and surprisingly effective. The magic wand lets you circle or highlight anything to transform it into something useful, like a mock-up or a polished version of your notes. Now, again, a little bit like Gemmoji, I'm not sure how much I'll use it, 
But what I like about this is it feels like something your magical iPad or your phone that is so intelligent should be able to do. It feels really intuitive. It is a glimpse, in my view, of what Apple sees AI should be, which is seamless and practical. Okay, so I will admit that I was a little bit harsh on Siri earlier. I know that their plans for Siri getting smarter is a long way down the road. That doesn't stop the fact that they tried to create Gen Mojis and not actually make Siri good. So, you know, let's be real here. They did drop the ball, but if, if you can improve the way that Siri engages with your applications, that example I gave earlier of, you know, using my phone to just quickly ask when my next flight is, that is a huge benefit and feels very much like what this powerful computer in my pocket should be able to do. So a great example of the very small step that I think Siri has moved in the right direction is I can ask to send a text to my dad, to my mum, to a friend. Hey Siri, text dad. And it says, you usually message from WhatsApp. You usually message from I iMessage. And it will just send it from there, which is such a nice feature that again shows the promise of where this is going. And that leads me on to the good. The thing that I think really saves Apple intelligence. ChatGPT, could you analyze this page for me? So this is where Apple intelligence really shines. Natively baked into it is ChatGPT. The integration is genius. And if you ask me, I think it's one of the best integrations into a system of any other AI assistant. In fact, you can actually shortcut Siri completely and go straight to asking ChatGPT. ChatGPT, how would you get to the moon? So what does that mean in, in practicality? Well, it means that you're able to tap into the more advanced, much smarter models at a whim. So the writing tools, you know, they're absolutely fine. They do a good job of quickly summarizing and tightening things up with Apple. Great, fine, using their own on-device models. But with an internet connection, you can compose something brand new and integrate that through into ChatGPT. Little seconds shaved off between copying and pasting the thing that you've written and putting it into ChatGPT can be done in seconds with Compose. That, again, a really nice native integration. Every application that has a keyboard can access this feature. That is a pretty intelligent use of ChatGPT. Apple, forget generative AI gimmicks and image stuff. Focus instead on streamlining people's lives, enhancing their lives with your technology, making it so integrated that you don't even notice that when you go back to a time when you didn't have it, it feels archaic. That is what Apple has been really good at. That is what Apple intelligence needs to be. But I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that Apple intelligence is going to live up to its promise? Is it already there for you? Or is it absolutely terrible and you never wanna see another part of it again? I would love to know. And if you like what you saw today and you like these honest breakdowns, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button even better. And team, we will see you next time on Future Simplified. See you later.